Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another edition of Sim UK Tuts. Today I am going to show you how to ensure that you are getting the best speeds you can with the Virgin Media Hub 3. This process is quite simple, but if you have any concerns about logging into your router at all, I have other tutorials you might want to watch first just to get you up to speed. Either way, this is a quick, highly effective and easy tutorial, so let's begin. The Virgin Media Hub 3 boasts some exciting features. Today I am going to focus on the supercharged Wi-Fi standard 802.11ac. This new standard promises much higher transfer speeds than its predecessor 802.11n. So how does this work and what does that mean for you? Well, potentially, it means speeds of between 433 megabits per second to several gigabits per second. Nice, huh? Well, yes and no, actually, so let me explain. Your current broadband speed can be referred to as your bandwidth. Your bandwidth is limited to what broadband package you have and depicts the maximum speed you can download to your home. The higher the bandwidth, the faster your internet pages will load. Actually, that's not 100% true, because the speeds you actually get are also subject to throughput, which actually represents the amount of that data which reaches you at that speed. So for example, if your bandwidth is a 2 cm wide straw and something in your home, be it a cable, a router or a PC connection, is only 1 cm wide, you will only have a throughput of the 1 cm wide straw. That is what we are going to help resolve today. So you probably have the gist of throughput. That's great. I won't get too technical now, but this is the crux of it all. The vast majority of devices released in the past few years will undoubtedly have the 802.11n standard in place. The 802.11ac standard is potentially particularly good at gaming and streaming HD content, which is exactly what we want. It does this with eight spatial streams and channels up to 80 MHz wide, but only on the 5 GHz spectrum. The 5 GHz spectrum is less crowded than the 2.4 GHz spectrum, and therefore can emit cleaner data transfers, but there is also a caveat. The 2.4 GHz has a longer, stronger signal and can penetrate through walls and offer a signal further away. Herein lies the problem with the Hub 3 in its default configuration. If you have not already split your frequencies, and please do check out my tutorial on that if you want to know how, then the Hub 3, bless it, tries to keep you online 100% of the time. It does this by switching you to the best or strongest signal. This is often the slower 2.4 GHz frequency thereby giving you a lower throughput. To stop this and ensure that your device stays on the 5 GHz frequency at all times, you can simply block your device from connecting to the 2.4 GHz frequency. Log into your router. Click on Connected Devices. You will see here that I have just one device connected. Ignore the speed column as this is not an accurate speed. But pay attention to which Wi-Fi channel you are currently connected to. Even if this says 5 GHz now, you will, most likely, at some point, be swapped to the 2.4 GHz frequency. And this is exactly what we will stop from happening. First of all, you will need to configure your wireless mode to cater for all devices within your home. Select Advanced Settings, Wireless, and finally, Wireless Signal. By default, 
the Hub 3 is set up to allow 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz wireless devices to connect via a single SSID. The Hub 3 will auto switch your connection to the most stable. In theory, this can offer better stability, but often returns slower speeds. In my home, we do still have a single device which connects on band B and a few that connect on band G. If you do not have devices which require this standard, then do not select them. Equally, if you have devices which will connect using the 5 GHz frequency using variants of the 802.11n standard, make sure that you cater for them also. This chart clearly indicates the speed advantages of each standard. 802.11ac, seen here, is the fastest of all. Almost all devices released in the past five years have the capability of connecting to the 802.11n frequency. Unless you have devices which specifically require the 802.11g or prior standards, then turn this off because 54 megabits per second is slow. Apply your changes. Unfortunately, you may encounter one of the Hub 3's biggest problems. I have been logged out after applying my settings. You would think this be a small issue, but unfortunately, the Hub 3 still believes that I am logged in. Therefore, I will not be permitted to log in again until that session has been cleared. This is despite being on exactly the same computer and the same browser session. You have two options. You can restart the router or wait for approximately 20 minutes for the session to clear. I am going to make a cup of tea. To ensure that your primary devices stay on the faster 5 GHz channel at all times, you can split the two frequencies into two separate SSIDs and ensure that you connect to the spectrum that you desire. Please see my tutorial on that. Or you can keep the single SSID and block your main devices from connecting to the 2.4 GHz spectrum at all. To do this, click on Advanced Settings, then in the drop-down, Wireless, and finally, security. Scroll down until you see wireless Mac filtering. There are a few options available to you here, but for now, simply select the deny option and scroll down until you can see both the attached devices list and add device sections. You can manually enter the name and MAC address of your chosen device, or the easier method is to select the device in the attached devices list and it will auto-populate for you. I have already added my device, hence why I get this error. Notice that the device name does not display. This appears to be yet another feature of the Hub 3. But you simply need to select 2.4 GHz in the wireless radio channel and then select Add Device. Please note at this stage, you may be logged out and encounter the same problem that we did previously. So I'm guessing you want to know what difference this is going to make to your system. I'm running a 100 megabits per second download speed here, and these are the speed tests that I get with and without this applied. Gaining an extra 50% in speed is a massive improvement and it's consistent, but please note that the 5GHz frequency is less stable than the 2.4.
If you drop out consistently, you may need to revert back to your original settings. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope it has helped you. Please like and subscribe if you would like to see more.